I would say, um, not judging myself when I've tried my best, you know, I used to be, I w I guess I would say I was a perfectionist where, you know, I would try something and it didn't go my way and I would write that off as a failure. And I think I've really learned that, that all those failures have kind of culminated in, in where I'm at in my life now. Do you love the Pacific Northwest as much as I do and want to show it off wherever where you go? I have the best apparel for you. Go to Forever Green PNW. So that's Forever E R G R N P N W uh, dot com or on their social media and go check them out. They have the best apparel. They have sweatshirts, they have hoodies, they have tees, they have swimsuits. They've got all kinds of great things to represent the Pacific Northwest. And they also are doing something really cool, little deals with their hoodies. So go check out them. They're fantastic and have a fantastic day. Welcome to Keeping Tabs. I'm Tab the Croc. And every Monday, I talk to someone here in North Idaho, the goal to connect more people in the Coeur d'Alene area. And then every Friday, I talk to someone outside the community to bring in a new perspective and to learn a little bit about yourself. All right. I have Heather Durrell with me, um, longtime friend, um, since we were what, four? <laughs> yeah, since before I can remember. So I've known her forever. Um, we are talking about a brand new business she is starting in the Coeur d'Alene area called Sand Trap. And I am so pumped. My fiance and I are really excited for you guys to open up. So Yay. tell us a little bit about um, who you are and what you guys are doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I was, I was born and raised here in Coeur d'Alene. I was actually born at Kootenai Health. So, um, I haven't strayed far. Um, we, we're golfers. I mean, uh, especially my husband and his brother. Um, and obviously in the wintertime here, you can't golf and your golf game kind of goes downhill. And they, um, they've been talking about a golf simulator forever. In fact, for a long time, there was going to be a golf simulator in my garage. And I was like, mm, I mean, I guess I'll allow it. <laughs> but I was like, that was supposed to be my gym. Um, and uh, so for a long time, we actually talked about putting one in our garage. And then um, my husband's brother, who retired from the Air Force, moved to town. And he has a master's degree in business and, and started writing this business plan for a golf simulator. And you know, the stars just kind of aligned. We, um, we had a friend of a friend who did commercial real estate and was like, Hey, this property just opened up, come look at it. And we came and looked, um, and there are already a couple other letters of intent in on it. And we we're like, mm, let's just throw one in, not expecting anything. And the next day, all of a sudden we had a business. <laughs> so it was kind of like, it was, it was a long time dream that just kind of, you know, happened suddenly. And I feel like with those opportunities, you kind of have to just jump. Like you can't, yeah. like, if, if it's there, yeah. like, especially in this market, you got to just go with it. Exactly. You can't think too hard about it. You just kind of have to be like, all right, is this what we want to do? Um, let's just, let's just do it. <laughs> See what yeah. happens. So, I mean, if you're listening, a lot of people have been to different golf simulators, whether it's top golf, whether it's indoor, whatever, uh, what, what is different? I mean, I've been peeking on some of the stuff you guys have been posting on social media what makes your guys is a little bit different and unique? Yeah. Um, what our vision for it really is, is, um, not so much, you know, top golf, you have the, there's a lot of action going on, you know, there's the full size restaurant. Um, there's tons and tons of things that you can be doing. And there's a lot of people, um, our vision for it is just kind of a, a place where you can come, um, play a round or two or golf, have a drink or two, um, and kind of have more of an intimate setting. Um, we also really kind of, you know, want it to be a place where, you know, we know your name when you walk in the door. Um, and it, I think that goes kind of just along with that small town feel of, of Coeur d'Alene, no matter how much we grow, we still have kind of that small town feel. And that was kind of our ideas is being a part of the community in that way where we're, um, where we're, you know, just, we, we know everyone and, and they can come on in anytime and, um, so that was our vision is to really get away from that top golf kind of party setting and really just have a place that you can come for an hour or two and, and just hang out. Yeah. And you guys, I mean, the, the 
what the simulator doesn't look, it looks real. Like it looks like real, like you're on a golf course. Oh my gosh. Uh, that's, and that's one of the things that I think why simulators are becoming so popular lately, you know, golf simulators have been around forever. Um, you know, I, I, I can think of one in town that's been there forever. Um, but in recent years with um, VR technology getting better and better, I think that the golf simulators have come along with that. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's, it's so immersive. I mean, it's, and the, and the nice part too is about it is yes, it's immersive and you kind of do feel like you, you got to play around a golf, but at the same time, it's quicker, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> with golf courses and how crowded they are around here, it can take four or five hours to play 18 holes. Whereas you can come to a golf simulator and with four people, you can play through 18 holes in a couple hours. So that's, that's kind of a nice feature of it too, but yeah, it's, they're so immersive. It's, they're so cool. I know. Then you have to get in your car. Then you have to like, go find your ball. So at least yeah. that, you don't have to go in the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It saves you all that time. And then the other thing about it is that you can play at courses that you, um, that you would never otherwise have dreamed at playing at. Um, like for example, um, my husband and his brother and their friends took a, a, a road trip over to Bandon Dunes in Oregon which is one of the world's most prestigious courses. It's right on the ocean. It's incredible. But the reason, one of the reasons they did it is because they actually played it on a golf simulator. And so they were like, whoa, this is amazing. Let's go, let's go see it live in person. <laughs> so I think I posted something on Instagram, um, a video that they took out there and it's just incredible, but it's cool that you can experience some of those courses that you might not, never otherwise get to go to. That's a great point. And like the ones like, the ones that you guys have, like what you, you guys post in those pictures, I had to like zoom oh to like see that they were, I was like, is this real or fake? Like it looks yeah. so good. Yeah. And the, the integration, um, with the ball tracking, you know, it's, it's not just a video game feel it really with the way that the, the views change and the ball flies and how accurate and precise it is. It's, it's as close as you can get to the real thing. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to know a little bit more about you. Um, what is your favorite go-to restaurant in Coeur d'Alene? Um, you know, I have a few. I would probably have to say Paragon, um, growing up on Government Way. Um, obviously, for one, we, we host trivia there. So um, <laughs> that's one of the reasons. You guys are still doing the trivia, too, on top of We all are, that. yeah. Um, we only do it from in the fall time, like from fall to, to spring. So we usually take a break during the summer. But we do host trivia up there. I think we've been doing it for seven years. But um, we just love that place because their food is it's phenomenal. And it's a really cool place. And I like their little back yeah. patio area. Yeah, and it has a cool history. Like it used to be this just kind of trashy dive bar. And now they've made it into this really cool kind of pub, sort of um, like English pub kind of a feel. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah. um, outside of, you know, playing golf since you guys love to play golf and do your other things what are your outside hobbies that you love to do I mean I know them personally because I know you but <laughs> <laughs> you know them and anybody that follows me on social media knows um, my dogs <laughs> are my hobby <laughs> that's pretty much all I post is pictures of my dogs but they're just so cute I can't help it um yeah I like to do, you know, take my dogs for walks and take them down swimming um in the summertime and of course, you know, just like anyone that lives here, we love to hike and um, ride our bikes around town and um, just generally enjoy this awesome town. Yeah. I mean, we are all very lucky. We talk about this all the time is how lucky we are. And, um, you oh know, gosh, yeah. on the other side, you know, where we grew up, it's this even smaller town, but Coeur d'Alene mm -hmm. always felt like that big city to us because we were like, oh yeah, all brown <laughs> people. <laughs> So it's funny when people are like talking about the traffic and stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's funny as, and I'm sure you experience, especially in your line of work that it, you can, I can leave my house and go downtown by myself and just walk around and I will end up spending the day with people I know because you run into people that, you know, it's just, that's one of the cool things about Coeur d'Alene and, um, and, and that, and that I can walk out my door and, you know, walk a mile and I'm at the most, one of the most gorgeous lakes in the country. And it's just, Coeur are incredible. I'm so grateful that I was born and, and live here. 
I know. I think we're all like all of our, our, our group of people that we know from this area. It's, we all are very grateful. I mean, I went away for college for just a little while and I'm like, I have to go back. Why did I leave? Yeah. This is the most beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and for someone like you that travels a lot, I would imagine, you know, you, you have a lot to compare it to. And so I, that was one thing I experienced the, the, the times when I've done um, road trips across the country, you know, we'll find a lake and be like, Oh, you know, there's a pretty lake, but it just, it, I haven't found anything that's comparable to how beautiful Coeur d'Alene is. And how much, more yet. <laughs> because I, it's so funny. I told someone this the other day, I was like, I used to tell people where I'm from. I'm like, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Cause it's, I, I can't say Harrison, Idaho. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would tell them they're like, where I was like, well, close to Spokane. They're like, where I'm like, see, yeah, <laughs> like I had to like really stretch and yeah. Now, funny like I'll meet people I'm like oh I'm from Idaho I don't even say Coeur d'Alene now and yeah. they're like oh do you know where Coeur d'Alene is <laughs> yeah they're like it's either Boise or Coeur d'Alene <laughs> like we're on the map now we're definitely on the map yeah so you're a big I was I'm wondering if this is going to be um along these lines but if you know Heather she's a big nerd and I love that for her <laughs> Star Trek right did I say it right oh, yeah <laughs> yep. I'm yep. ever since she was a kid she always was if you could have dinner with anybody dead or alive, who would it be? <laughs> you already nailed me. <laughs> um, I would have to say Sir Patrick Stewart, um, Captain Picard from Star Trek. Um, he is still filming. Uh, uh, you're probably not aware of this, but if you are a Star Trek fan, you are. Um, he's still filming a Star Trek series right now. He's like 80 something years old. Um, but he's just, I, I just feel like he would give the best life advice. He's this cool guy. He like rescues um, pit bulls in England um, because there it's illegal to own a pit bull there. So he pulls these abused pit bulls and fosters them and then finds homes for them. And he's Captain Picard and he's like a Shakespearean actor. I mean, he's just the coolest guy in the world. So for sure. Sir Patrick Stewart. I just knew it. Like I had it in my, he I didn't know what it was going to be. I was like, I feel like it's going to be along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up, yep growing up in a small <laughs> town and then now you know, live in Coeur d'Alene you've done some traveling you've done some cool stuff is there and you've obviously done different um things line of work so you've worked mm -hmm. with the hospital you you know yeah. you're into fitness you've done all these different things is there a life lesson that you have learned kind of the hard way um yeah you know I I would say um not judging myself when I've tried my best, you know, I used to be, I, I guess I would say I was a perfectionist where, you know, I would try something and it didn't go my way. And I would write that off as a failure. And I think I've really learned that, that all those failures have kind of culminated in, in where I'm at in my life now. Um, I think for a while, because of that, I was afraid to, to fail at things because I thought, okay, if it doesn't go exactly the way I have it planned in my mind, then then I didn't do it right or it didn't work out. But I think over time I've learned, you know, as long as I, I try my best and put 100% of what I have into to things, they kind of work out the way they're supposed to. You don't see it at the time, but then looking back, you're like, oh, well, I, you know, I, I'm here because that happened and then because it happened in the way that it did. Yeah, and I think, so I think that's one of those lessons where you kind of have to learn not to beat yourself up about things as long as you're putting in 100%. Uh, I hundred percent, I think as you grow older, you start to realize like what really does matter. And like a lot mm -hmm. of those things that we were perfectionist about, or we have to have a certain way, we're like, does it really matter in the big scheme of things? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's more about, about, about giving it your all and, and kind of learning those lessons when, when things don't go the way that you want them or learning to accept things when they don't go the way you want them hundred <laughs> percent. We, like I would say, I'm in my van. I don't know if you guys can tell, but like, that's what like multiple different times you have to try things. So <laughs> I imagine you really have to roll with the punches on that one. <laughs> yes. Every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you were, if I gave you a billboard and it's downtown Coeur d'Alene or Northwest Boulevard, one of our busiest places, a huge billboard, what would your billboard either have or say on it? Now, are you talking like in a from a professional standpoint or a personal it billboard be star trek it could be heather's face it could be <laughs> fan trap it could be whatever you want oh you're giving me a lot of leeway here 
Oh gosh, what would I want to? Yeah, if you could put anything. I mean, it could be promoting your business or it could just be something fantastic for the world to see. I think, um, you know, I don't know how PG your podcast is, it's- but I think it would say, don't be a dick. Just in big <laughs> red letters, just don't be a dick. I just, I get so tired of people being stupid to each other for no reason and oh, you know it's, yep I get it yeah <laughs> and uh, you know there's there's a lot of people that are so kind to each other and wonderful but it's just the I just when I run into people that are assholes for no reason I just like stop it you know whether that's road rage and traffic or just on a daily basis like phone calls that kind of thing it's like why stop <laughs> Well, and no I, reason to be this way. I think we're seeing a lot of it right now, especially in our community, because, um, and I, I think we we surround ourselves with really good community mind people, things that we like mm-hmm. we want to build this community to make it better. But there's a lot of people that are really angry because of the growth. And yeah, seeing it as like, hey, it's going to happen no matter what. You might as well be a part of it and be like a positive. But they're just like, go home. Like it's very like angry. Yeah. I have a hard time seeing that as well. I do too. And you know, the reality is you know, my parents came here from, from California. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a native Coeur d'Alene person, but I wouldn't be here if my parents hadn't moved up here. So how can I hold it against people for moving up here? And I agree. I think, I think as long as we're working on infrastructure and trying to accommodate things and, and not just, just pile people in here, but actually kind of, you know, create and foster an environment and make sure that our, our schools are keeping up with it and that sort of thing. I, you know, it's one of those things where growth happens. Like you said, it's, it, you can't fight it at a certain point. So you might as well make the best of it. Exactly. And that's such a, I mean, it's yes, but if, I think what will happen is if we have a couple hard winters, we'll really weed out the people that want to be here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah. I, you know, every now and then I run into the funniest situations. Like I was at, I was at Les Schwab tires one day and I heard this lady asking the guy, um, I think he, she was getting snow tires put on her, her car, her truck. And she asked him, she was like, so since I have snow tires, that means I can just drive like as if there's no snow. Right. And the guy just looked at her like, oh, oh. <laughs> and I just want to be like, oh, honey, let's talk. <laughs> Maybe you should go back to driving school just for a little for refresher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and, you know, from a, from a golf standpoint, we're definitely seeing that. And, you know, another reason why um, they wanted to open the indoor golf is that some of the golf courses are just getting so crowded um, and so many people want to play, but they're, you know, their tee times are so close together now that you either end up waiting for the group in front of you or slowing down the group behind you. Um, and so, you know, there's been some days where they're like, well, the weather's not that great. We just want to play real quick. Well, you know, we could do, we could do a virtual course instead and you know get these holes get through these holes but well and we um, and that's a great point because our, I mean our winter can technically last you know October I mean as kids I've watched yeah. our snowsuits going trick-or-treating so mm-hmm. like technically we could have some long winters where like it would be great like they like you said it's like you're working on your golf game and then it's winter so we're yeah oh so that's a great and we do have like one golf simulator kind of place in town but not yeah it's not the focus well, and, and, you know, the, the one that I know of is they're, they're booked all the time too. Um, and that was another thing that went into this business is that they would actually try to book times there and their tea times were always booked up, which is great. I mean, that means people love it. Um, but at the same time, they were like, oh, I think we need, I think we need another one in town. <laughs> so that really, um, kind of, kind of really started it. Um, and then as much as I hope the smoke doesn't come in this season, that's another issue is. Yeah, it might be beautiful here in in August, but if the smoke comes in, you can't really be out on the golf course for four hours breathing that in. So it gives you another option if you really want to play. How many simulators do you guys have? Um, So we have four bays um, and then also a a putting green that will have, I believe, three cups. So you can kind of mess around on the putting green while you're waiting or or if that's what you want to do, you can do that. Um, Yeah. Do you have the... the cup pong do you have that yet no but I have it in my Amazon cart to be bought (laughs) (laughs) I want one of those I think that would be so fun is that you're like I went to a birthday party and they had it there I was like this thing is so cool yeah oh yeah that's coming um 
working on getting all the all the fun little trinkets and little games and and things that we can have for people to enjoy there. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love that, you know, and Katie, I had her on the podcast not too long ago. Two of my good friends from, you know, high school now have like gaming places and they <laughs> both of you are total nerds, so it fits perfectly. <laughs> oh yeah. Um I'll find a way to incorporate the nerdiness into this place as well. Don't worry. I'll figure it out. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So obviously the, the world is, um, you know, there's a lot to discover in, you know, the world and things going on and whatever it may be. Is there something you still want to discover, whether it's your, about yourself, whether it's traveling, um, in the near future? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, like anyone, I would love to have more opportunity to travel. Um, there's just so many places to see. I haven't been to Europe yet. I really, again, my nerdiness, I really want to go um, to New Zealand and visit um, Hobbiton down there, Lord of the Rings. Also, Lord of the Rings nerd. I'll name all the nerd things, and I'm a fan of them. Um, <laughs> so, so that's on the bucket list. Um, Didn't and you yeah, I would love like to something do- for, uh, what was it? Um, Oh gosh, what's the, it's, it's a theme park that you, you geek out about, but I cannot remember it. Um, the Harry Potter world. Yes. See, I, I don't know much about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Harry Potter world. Yeah. Harry Potter, Star Wars, Star Trek, Marvel, all of the things. Yeah. So for any nerds that like nerd stuff, just come play golf and we'll figure out some way to make it nerdy. My brother had this idea. He's like, what if you could do like cosmic golf like what if you could jailbreak the software and write programming for it and make it like you're playing golf on mars and uh, you could adjust the gravity for it so like your ball would fly differently and i was like that is genius (laughs) oh my goodness so you know that could be that's a pipe dream but it could happen (laughs) that's a great segue into my next question what is you guys's like do you guys have goals or what you can where you see your business in the next like three to five years yeah um so we're hoping to just kind of be able to um operate on a day-to-day basis um we plan on um probably having um one or two employees um depending on how much um you know i want to fill in on the weekends or my brother-in-law wants to work and that sort of thing um and then eventually hopefully um Sorry, something in my eye. Um, eventually, maybe open a second location um, is kind of our where we'd like to go. Um, I think it's one of those things where we, like we were talking about before, we're really going to have to jump on it because golf simulators are getting more and more popular. And so we're like, all right, if we, we've got to get this going. Otherwise, other people are going to come in and fill in those gaps. Um, but we're hoping maybe, um, so right now we're, we're in Midtown Coeur d'Alene, um, just north of the UPS store there. And then um, we're hoping maybe to get to do a location in Hayden somewhere. And I think that's a great, great spot. It's kind of like close to like the Hayden side. And then it's also mm-hmm. close, close enough to still, if you're like a downtown person that you can like, yeah. you can, it's not like too far. Like, I feel like it's in a good mid point for people. Yeah. It's kind of right in the center of everything. Good. Well, if someone wants to follow you, get a hold of you, maybe wants to connect with you guys or figure more out about you, how can they, can they do that? Uh, lots of ways. So um, you can go to our website, which is sandtrapcda.com. Um, all the contact info is on there and our address and phone number. Um, follow us on social media. Um, it's Sandtrap Indoor Golf on both Instagram and Facebook. Even have a TikTok now. There's no content on it at all. I was like, let me follow you. I love my TikTok. (laughs) Um, I feel like you guys have fun with that one. I think you guys will have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, we will have fun with that. Um, I I haven't been able to film any footage yet for it, but um, we're working on kind of building out the simulators right now. So I'm sure I'll be able to get some good stuff for that. Um, But yeah, Sandtrap Indoor Golf on Instagram and Facebook. I'm posting updates. Um every week just to kind of tell everyone where we're at um we were originally planning on opening in september and now it's looking like we're gonna be able to open in august so um if you follow along there you'll be able to see where we're at i know i saw that you guys have officially have your grand opening planned and uh like some really cool stuff happening 
Yeah, um, I'm excited for the grand opening party. We're doing that September 18th. Um, it's basically going to be an open house style. So we're going to be open from 10 to 8. Um, we have Loji coming in to play music. If you aren't familiar with Loji, definitely go follow him. He's awesome. Um, That's a cool dude. Oh, he's so cool. He's from New Zealand, right? Yeah. And he, he just plays gigs around town. He's super talented. Um, so he's going to be there playing music for us. We're going to have food. Um, we're going to have games in the simulators, prizes for, you know, longest drive and that sort of thing. Um, games on the putting green um, and just a lot of cool um, giveaways and, and raffles. And so it'll be kind of an all day thing. We'll have balloons out front, um, hopefully a couple of food trucks. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. You guys are opening in August. Like That's just, yeah. that's so soon. Yeah, as soon as we can get the simulators going, um, we'll we'll have the doors open. So we'll have a kind of a soft opening, and then then the grand opening party in September. That's awesome. So I like to ask people, um, kind of, uh, it's been a rough year, and we're lucky enough to live in an area where it hasn't. We ha we're not in a huge city. We're city. We're right. We're the big cities where everyone's just piled on top of each other. So of course, it's been very different for us. But yeah. What, what kind of advice would you give to someone that maybe is struggling still, whether it's, you know, financially, emotionally, whatever it may be from the effect of the last year? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to not be too affected. Um, my job was one of those jobs where I had to continue to be there. Um, so, you know, I would say take it one day at a time, you know, and again, do the best that you can do. Um, feel like the best advice is as long as you're giving it hundred percent and, and trying to do your best, that's really all you can do. Um, I do, my heart goes out to all the businesses that have struggled through this. Um, you know, I love that our community has been so supportive and I think that's why so many people were okay. Um, during the pandemic is so many people made the, the conscious effort to go out and, and help local businesses. I mean, we, we are super frugal people and we never eat out. And I think probably 2020, we ate out way more than we ever had just as a, you know, conscious effort to go support, you know, local restaurants and, and everything. So uh, I just, you know, keep depending on, on our community and, and give it your best. <laughs> I love it. And I, I am so excited to have your business in the community um, I'm really yeah. excited. I love, like I, I was telling you the other day, it's like, I, I'm really proud of my class that I graduated with. Like, <laughs> they're all starting these awesome businesses and succeeding and just doing fantastic. Um, that's why we give hats off to uh, the Harrison Kootenai. Yep. Like, <laughs> I think that's a huge testament to Kootenai High School and the, specifically the teachers at Kootenai High School. I mean, we had I think about our teachers at Cooney all the time. I think about Mr. Olson. Um, I mean, my, my job now is, is math. <laughs> and I, I think about him all the time. Not, not my sand trap job, but my, yeah. my day job is, is I just do math all day. And I think about him all the time when I'm doing math in my head. Um, he was just such a phenomenal teacher and um, Ms. Barros and uh, Ms. Magnuson, like they were all just phenomenal. Well, and I think it shows you like that they really cared about us. It wasn't just, they were our teachers. It was like, we also had game nights, like with our uh -huh. like, track coach, like, or she would have like, want to do a baking thing. Like it was, and, and the times are different now, but like, I really, I think we grew up in a community and now mm -hmm. we want to like kind of create that community for more. Yeah. Time. Yeah. I like the idea that we're kind of bringing that, um, out into Coeur d'Alene and it, you know, Coeur d'Alene kind of already has that. So it's, it's really easy to kind of integrate that with, with the way Coeur d'Alene's always been. I love it. Well, Heather, thank you so much for giving me some time today. I am excited for you guys to start your business and I'm, we're definitely going to be there a lot. Yay. Thanks for having me. This was really fun. Thanks for listening to Keeping Tabs. I'm Tabitha Croc and every Monday I release a podcast about different community members here in North Idaho. And then we end the weeks on Fridays with a podcast about the things I'm passionate about, outdoors, adventures, sports, the van life, and even current events. So if you like what you heard, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube, Spotify, or iTunes. Thank you again. Now go be kind and do something great.